Hello everyone, welcome to today's challenge. Today we have a very simple exponential challenge on the board. There is a reason why I decided to bring out this question, okay? Uh, if you check the question, the question reads x to the power of 2 equal to x to the power of 5. Here we have to solve for all five roots that satisfy this exponential challenge. We all know that the highest exponent to any exponential challenge equals the number of roots that will satisfy that exponential equation. So here we have five as the highest power, and so we have to look for all five roots that will satisfy this equation. Now, the reason why I decided to bring this simple exponential challenge is to clarify a thing. There was a time I produced a video and I told my viewers in that YouTube shot, okay, it's a YouTube shot, that there are times whereby the law that says that when the bases are the same and we, you have an equality sign and that if you equate the exponent, does it hold water in most cases? Yeah, let's look at this question now. You discover that the bases are the same. So these and these are x. So can we say 2 is equal to 5 or 5 is equal to 2? No, we can't say so. Okay, so how do we now solve for all five rules to this exponential challenge? Okay, so if you're new here, this is online math TV where we roll out mathematics all the time for our learning, for our exams, for our exercise, okay, to exercise our brains. So without much waste of time, do not forget to subscribe if you're new here, okay? So let's dive into this challenge and see how we can solve for all five roots. Okay, so you will take our selection. All right, the question is x to the power of 2 equal to x to the power of 5. The first thing I'm going to do here is just to rearrange this expression here. So I want to move this x to the power of 2 to this side of the equation. So if I do that, then we can rewrite this as x to the power of 5 minus x to the power of 2 equal to 0. S to the power of 2 is the smallest exponent here. So let's factor it out here because we equally have it in here too. So this will give us x to the power of 2, bracket, s to the power of 2, dividing s to the power of 5, we are left with x to the power of 3, there, minus s to the power of 2, dividing s to the power of 2, we're left with 1. Everything equal to 0. Good. At this point, if you look at this, here we have your decimal, which is your multiplication, or rather, it's not a decimal, it's a multiplication. So, what do we do here? The right hand side is zero. So, we suck up to the zero product rule, which says that we equate this to zero and equate this to zero. So, therefore, we now have this x to the power of two is equal to zero, or our x to the power of three minus one equal to zero. So, here we're taking case one. So case one says that x to the power of two is equal to zero. So if we take the square root of both sides, we're going to come up with x to the power of two, or equal to the square root, equal to the square root of zero. And here we introduce plus minus. So this leaves the system. So we now have x is equal to plus minus zero. And you all know plus minus zero is equal to zero. So automatically our x one and two, so we have here s, comma, one, um, uh, two, rather, S com, uh, x1, comma, two is equal to plus minus zero, which is zero, okay? So let's rule out this. Who got on the first root to our exponential equation? And if you put dx plus minus zero into this, then you will discover that that will satisfy our equation. Because zero to the power of two is what? And zero to the power of five is what? All right, so let's go ahead and look for the other three roots that will satisfy this exponential challenge from the second entity. So case two, we have x to the power of three minus one equal to zero. Now, what if I decide to cube 1? Because 1 to the power of 3 will still give us 1. So I can rewrite this as x to the power of 3 minus 1 to the power of 3 equal to 
zero. But if we decide to factorize this out, what would this give us? Remember, well, let's continue on this side. So remember that when we have your a, have a to the power of three minus b to the power of three, this is equal to, we have our a minus b or e to a to the power of two plus a b plus b two, b square rather. Remember this? So if it's occur to this rule, yeah, okay, then we can do the same thing here. So from here, this now implies that our x to the power of three minus one to the power of three, this is equal to bracket open x minus one plus bracket bracket x to the power of two, the plus x, the dot what? One, okay? So x dot one, which is x times one, plus the one to the power of two, close bracket, everything equal to zero. Okay, so from here we now have x to the power of three minus one to the power of three. This is equal to bracket your x minus one, close bracket into x squared plus x plus one. Everything equal to zero. So if we have all this now implies our x minus one plus bracket bracket x squared plus x plus one plus bracket equal to zero. Again, we apply our zero product rule. We equate this to zero, equate this to zero. So we now have our x minus one is equal to zero. Therefore, our x three is equal to positive one. Okay, so we've gotten x1, x2, and x3 to our expression here now. We take case 4, which is our x to the power of 2 plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation. So we solve this quadratically using the formula method. Okay, so our formula says that our x is equal to minus b plus minus um, the square root of b squared the minus 4ac, okay, everything all over 2a. What is our a? The coefficient of x squared, which is plus 1, and b, coefficient of x, which is plus 1, and c, the constant term, which is plus one. So we have positive one, 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 or true. So from here, we now have x is equals to, if we substitute, we have here minus one plus minus the square root of one squared, okay, minus four dot one dot um, one all over two dot one. Okay, let's continue on this side of the board. So, yeah. All right, so from here, let's factorize this now. So we're gonna have our x is equal to minus one plus minus the square root of one minus four. Everything all over two, which is equal to minus one plus minus the square root of minus three all over two. Okay, so we remove the minus side here. Remember that the square root of minus one is equal to iota. Remember this? Okay, so let's simplify this. Minus one times plus three. So this will automatically give us a minus one plus minus the square root of three iota all over two. So we have two solutions from here now. One is plus, the other one is minus. So from here, therefore, our x four, you know, we've gotten our x three. So our x four will now be equal to, we take the positive one. So taking the positive one, I want to rewrite this. So this is going to give us 
iota of your square root of 3, then minus 1 all over 2. Okay, so this is the third root, 2. Fourth root, rather. All right, so now let's take our x5 from here now. So we're going to have here x5. This is equal to what I want to do now. I want to shift in the minus sign. Okay, sorry. Uh, I want to bring out the minus sign here. Yeah? So bracket your one plus iota root three close bracket all over two. Okay, so this is our our x five. Okay, so you now discover that from um, the beginning, we'll be able to solve our x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5 to this simple exponential challenge. All right. So if you learned something from this video, give the video a thumbs up, however simple it may be. You can just say, thanks, Jay, for what you're doing. Okay. It has not been easy, but you made it easier for us. Thanks to all our viewers all over the world and our subscribers. Remember, we love you. Online Mass TV loves you dearly. Bye for now.